Hi, my name is Walt Morey, and the goal of this video is to teach people with no massage experience how to safely and effectively start massaging people with fibromyalgia or certain other types of chronic pain. For an effective massage, you need to understand pain and avoid adding it to your massage, both as client and therapist. Physical pain occurs when you have done damage that has not fully healed or when you are in the process of doing damage to your body. If you add pain, you are adding damage, producing even more damage for their body to heal. This is counterproductive, and when working with people who are already in pain, it can provoke a crisis. When massaging people with fibromyalgia, follow these basic rules. First, try strongly to avoid adding pain. Second, communicate clearly with your client. Third, actively encourage your client to clearly communicate with you. Four, most people tend to under-report their discomfort. Watch for nonverbal clues and ask them very clear questions. Is this uncomfortable? And so on. Five, any indication that, that they are approaching pain should cause you to immediately reduce speed and or pressure. To the client with fibromyalgia, it is extremely important that you immediately tell your therapist when the speed or pressure they are using starts to be uncomfortable. They are not telepaths. And if they overtreat you, you will feel excess discomfort tomorrow. The goal for the setting of a massage is to provide a setting to help your client fully relax and for the therapist to be comfortable working. I use a massage table with a separate face cradle. I usually have a bolster because I start face down. This is to support their ankles. As necessary, I also use a heater. And to maintain warmth, I have a fleece on the table. It's extremely important that your client be sufficiently warm, not too warm, not overheated. On that, I use flannel sheets. and a flannel cover for the face cradle. A flannel top sheet for your client, again, to maintain Comfort, both temperature and modesty. And frequently, I will use a top blanket. And that's it. You may have noticed my hand shaking. I have a condition called essential tremor. Doctors tell me it's incurable, not life-threatening. My wife tells me it makes a better massage. Well, generally I begin the massage with the client face down. 
This allows me to start in one of the most troublesome areas, the back and neck. During the first few sessions, be vigilant about adding pain. Some people with fibromyalgia simply cannot tolerate much pressure, and they frequently are not capable of giving good feedback about their discomfort. A light, painless massage is much more useful than a painful massage that puts them in a crisis or causes enough pain that they do not wish to continue. Eventually, they will be able to tolerate more and more pressure, and this will allow deeper work to touch more levels of damage. In the beginning sessions, use long, extremely slow strokes as appropriate to the client's discomfort level. At this point, it is extremely counterproductive to add any pain as their body cannot tolerate even normal pressures. If you use excessive force or speed, they will have extreme neck discomfort the next day or so. If this occurs, it's a reminder to your client that they must return, reduce the allowable okay discomfort level and must let you know so you can properly respond. In subsequent sessions, you will find fewer painful points. The pressure can increase, but the speed must remain slow. I start generally with the moment of calm for me and for my client. I begin rubbing gently their scalp and squeezing around the base of their skull and on their neck, again very gently, searching for tight muscles. Usually as I massage, I'm almost in a meditation paying attention to my hands, so talking is not normal for me. Here I do some stretching of the neck and my fingers are cross-fibering the muscles between the shoulder and the skull in an attempt to start encouraging them to relax. Then I place a small amount of oil on my hands and begin effleurage to spread it and begin sensing tight muscles. I'm going to show mostly one side of the body in an attempt to make the video a little shorter. And I spend about 15 minutes generally on the back. I grab my hand under her shoulder, place my other hand on her shoulder blade, and do a gentle rotation. The idea is to encourage her muscles relax and release and become more open to being massaged. Then I pinch gently up here to work on the trapezius muscle up to her skull, encouraging it to release. Then I do my pressure, slow pressure. Again, check in with your client about the pressure. Some people with fibromyalgia really cannot tolerate much pressure. But with practice and with when this becomes less unfamiliar, they will be able to receive normal pressure. Okay, so I'm sensing some tight muscles here along 
the crest of her pelvis. I am using a higher pressure stroke here. Too much. And that's a little lower now. I use this hand to guide and this hand for pressure. In addition, there's some very good muscles on the shoulder blade, starting from the upper arm and coming across to the shoulder blade, moving from farther away from the heart towards the heart. And these muscles can be very sensitive, especially under the arm going over to the shoulder blade. And then let's assume the other side is done. And for the leg, I expose the leg. My socks are on. <laughs> and expose up to the gluteal area. Again, light oil, very firm, a gentle effleurage to spread it. And coming up the leg, cross fiber. And generally, the muscles in the leg are long and perhaps with some angular part, but this way I can find a tight muscle. Here's a tight muscle. And I can put pressure on it and move with pressure from the ankle to the knee and follow across. And then there's also a tight muscle here. Sometimes these muscles, but the idea is to use the cross fiber to find the tight muscles. Here is an area where frequently the muscles are very tight and I'm bracing my elbow on my hip and slowly sliding my hand. If your hand slips too easily, it's because you've used too much oil. And here, Again, adjust the pressure. This is high pressure if you can tolerate it. Other people may not, probably can at the beginning. Here on the pelvis, there are a variety of muscles all to support and control the leg. And they can produce a wide variety of painful symptoms. And again, I'm using one hand to guide, the other hand for pressure. Equally, at the beginning, you may not, you may be barely able to use one hand pressure. Okay. When done here, I readjust the coverage. Perhaps do a little rocking, perhaps a little vibration, especially in this area. Both rocking and vibration help calm the muscles that might have been overstressed. Now the next part, I'll let you imagine. Now having completed this side, I hold the sheets and as she turns over, and slides down so her head's on the table. Oh, this is the hardest part. Oof. Okay, down a little bit more. Okay. okay. Now here again, usually I continue with this leg, but for your viewing, I'll continue with this one. And 
cover the leg and fold it and support it with the weight of the leg, the covering. Again, light oil. And some cross fiber up the leg. Typically around five minutes on each leg, each side of each leg. And here I'm starting, I found a tight fiber and I'm putting pressure up to her comfort level encouraging the muscle to relax. And I can feel it relaxing as I move very slowly. And here, following up the muscles, pressure stroke. And I'm shortening this for the video, but when I finish the side, I put my fingers around under her hip to the greater trochanter of the femur. It's the part that the hip pivots on, and you can feel the muscles move as you rock her leg like this. And then I would usually switch sides and then again, very light oil. I massage her hand gently like this. Each finger pulling very gently. Then I put her hand up and slide down her arm. Sometimes doing a little cross fiber, looking for, again, tight muscles. When I find one, run on it from the wrist to the elbow. Then when I get to the elbow, I put her arm like this, shows up not too badly, and again, work downward so that she always feels well supported on her arm. And I would work around the top, all sides of the arm to get to here. This also minimizes demand on range of motion. Usually people, even if they have a lot of discomfort, can manage that kind of motion to start off with. Put the arm back down. And that's the arm. Now here, I remove the head cradle. Bring the stool. And here, let's see, I'll be working her abdomen. And this is an area that is very sensitive in general. And so double check with your client that it is acceptable for you to touch this area. 
Some people cannot, they're old history. So it's best to skip it if there's discomfort. And you do not need to uncover the area to work it. So take a little oil, lift the sheet, and on the soft part of the abdomen, do circular motions between the rib cage and the top of the pubic bone. Do cross fiber across the abdomen area. And usually that would be the limit for a first massage if they go that far. Eventually, you will be able to begin at the pubic bone and come across the rectus abdominis up to the rib cage, and you're looking to encourage that to release. And then you do the same on the other side. Also, there is the psoas muscle, which crosses the hip joint, mounts straight up across the pelvis, and then it descends deep into the abdominal cavity and attaches on the inside of the lumbar vertebrae. And that again is a little more advanced. And here, again, the pectoral area is very sensitive for many people. So confirm that it's okay to work there. And oil in the center, you will be working. The goal is to work on the muscles under the breast tissue. It comes up and across over to the shoulder. Use the pec major, pectoral major, and then up the side. There is another muscle, smaller, called pectoral minor, comes up and pulls your shoulder forward and down. And then on the sides, coming up from under the shoulder blade and attaching to each rib is the serratus anterior. And those can all be very tender and about five minutes in this area. Next, I'm working on her neck, my thumbs up the trapezius muscle on the back of her neck. And fingertips on the bones of her collarbone, and following up her neck. There are a number of muscles here. They're called the scalenes, and they support the head. They support her head and move it side to side. They can also produce some exquisite discomfort and very strange sensations. So you look for, again, tight muscles, and you move up the neck when you find a tight muscle, they end here, just behind the jaw on the skull. And do that three to five minutes. Then on the face, with no more oil on your hands, you still have a tiny bit, check that it's okay to massage your face. And then you work on the forehead, moving to the side, like this, coming over to her scalp, and then along her eyebrow, and then from her nose, over and up. Follow the bones of the face on the upper lip and then on the jaw. Again.
in all of this, you adjust to be comfortable and hopefully pleasurable for your client. Nothing you do should ever add pain. So that is a start in helping, and this can carry you quite a ways. Thank you.